we're obviously not going to be able to cover everything that's new in the lathe and mill turn product or, you know, maybe some smaller items that, that didn't make the cut into Devin's presentation. So remember, you there's there's always multiple ways to find out additional information of what's new. So you can go to the, the What's New PDF that's built into the software. There's the What's New Mastercam website. They have a bunch of videos up there as well. The Mastercam forum is always a good resource. So if you don't have your account linked, you can do that via the file menu as well under file and then community in Mastercam 2020. You, you can link your license and create an account and that gives you access to the forum, knowledge base, what they call the tech exchange where you can get tool libraries like some of the Sandvik and Iskar turning libraries are already built into there with the 3D tools where you can just down, download them and find the part number what you're using and pop it right into Mastercam. And then lastly, Mastercam's YouTube channel, they, they put out what's new videos basically all year long. All right, everyone, uh, as Matt said, or introduced me, my name's Devin Glass. I, uh, I'm the applications engineer based in Indiana. Um, and today we're just gonna kind of cover some of the new features in 2020. Uh, like Matt said that, uh, you know, we're not gonna go over all of them. Uh, there might be a small little new feature that we didn't feel was necessary to include in this presentation. So we're just going to kind of cover the biggest biggest changes. Um, starting with is just general lathe um, chuck creation. So if I just bring in a bring in an average default lathe here, and give it a second to load up. For those of you who have been playing around with 2020 so far, you may have noticed when you define your chuck jaws, and I'll just make some random stock, say six by three. You make chuck jaws, uh, the page looks a little bit different. Um, now we can parametrically create our chuck jaws, which before we were kind of limited because we can only set a set height, a set width, but now we can determine that for every single step and really get deep with uh, how this how this jaw is defined. So if if I wanted to say you know the width for this one is not 1.5, it's actually two inches, and the width of the second step is actually 0.75. Um, I could start playing around with this quite a bit. We have some shortcut keys where we can say you know, initiate the jaw or initialize the chaw chuck. Ah, sorry. Initialize, initialize chuck jaw definition. There we go. Uh, you can kind of get back to where it was on the old on the old lay section where you basically gave it a jaw height, you gave it a jaw width, and then how many steps, and then it just populates that table with the old style. Um, also, some other shortcut keys like make them all equal to the first or the selected step. Um, make them e all the heights equal to the selected step. Uh, there's a reverse order, which I found very handy when I was testing it out on the previous part where it just flips the steps if you're doing like an ID and OD. And then we can just add or subtract steps. So it, it gives you a lot more flexibility on what your jaws, uh, what your jaws are shaped as. And we can also now define pie jaws and uh, get that different shape as opposed to rectangular with a set radius for each. Um, and the important thing here is with this new setup page, you'll note that we didn't really say where the jaws are located on the part. Um, we actually have to go to the next page, the parameters page. And now we'd say if we're clamping on the OD or the ID, excuse me, and you can see our reference point isn't quite right because it was left over from that previous uh, jaw that was set up here, but if I hit reference point right there, it brings my jaws up on the screen and I can put the reference point wherever I want. So say if I was clamped on the uh, uh, on the ID, I could pick this point and that's where the X and Z is going to be referenced. But I'm just going to pick on this front corner, just like I would for an average OD jaw. Hit the enter key and you can see now our reference point is here. So now I could put in the the diameter or the Z of where I want to put that, where that point's going to be referenced, or I could just say from stock with a grip length of sure an inch. And if I preview my lay boundaries, you can see here, there's my jaw defined parametrically, and it's clamping onto an inch wherever my reference point was. So a lot more control, 
um, a lot more control of what you can create your jaws with. Um, and a little bit later, you're, we'll play around with jaw definition for the mill turn. It's the same method of creation for mill turn, um, but without give, sharing too much too early, uh, we'll be able to save these jaws for different jobs and different setups. But that's really the biggest change to the jaw setup, uh, the jaw, the jaw creation page in 2020. Because in 2019 we just didn't have that much control over it. Next that has changed is on the lathe tool manager. You may have, may have noticed that not only are there a tools tab, there's now an inserts tab and a holders tab. Um, Mastercam's kind of moving in the direction where you don't the days of just making a tool that's both the insert and the holder kind of married together to death through them part um, is kind of going away. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for being able to use the same holder geometry and use a different insert for it. Maybe it's a different grade, maybe it has a different corner radius, maybe you have it's a different relief. Well, now we're trying to split those apart. So when you define 3D tooling, you can have separate inserts and have separate holders and then make them after the fact. So right here, I have just an insert I created. Um, I could right click create insert in this page. And I could say if it's general turning, general threading, uh, grooving and parting and all that stuff and all the stuff you're used to seeing. But another feature that I really liked um, that they brought in is if I'm trying to make a, a, a insert from scratch and I don't have say a file for it, I could type in an ASI code or an ISO code right here and it'll give me that tool geometry. So I got a few random uh, insert codes here that you are you may be familiar with. It's one of the more com some of the more common ones. So I'll put in CNMG 432, enter. You can see there it brought in most of the information. The only thing it was missing was a relief angle, and that's only because I'm missing that information in the code. If I had that information in that ANSI code, that would come through. Um, an example I had before, of course, I clicked off the page. Give me one moment. I have a, I have this, uh, I have a random window open where I was just like looking up for inserts, just for examples on this. So this one, the ANS, ANSI number is cc gt 21.50.5 sa you can see there grab the relief angle grab the inscribed circle diameter thickness and all that good stuff thanks to this being all standardized so it's definitely very helpful to just make inserts from scratch and once you hit the green check it's now saved in that insert library on top of that, you'll notice that we have new filters for the insert filter and the holder filter. So when you start building these libraries up, we can go into the insert filter and we have a lot of control on what we see and what we don't see. And the holder filter also, if you, once you start getting, you are getting creating a, a lot of holders, we'll be able to uh, filter those as well. And when you go to create a 3D tool, in the insert and in the holder page, we had the open insert model, uh, grab, grab or select from graphics view, but now we have open from library. We can go in the library, select that insert, and there we go. So we can keep using the same insert, the same definition over and over and over again. So those are the main, the main, uh, main different additions there. On the topic of 3D tooling, there is a file that I want to bring up here. With 2020, we now have the ability with 3D tools to uh, define face groovers properly. So I got a little part here. If I turn on the, three, the solid, you kind of get a better idea of what it looks like here. So I'm just doing this face groove on this kind of bushing sort of thing. If we were to verify this, what you probably used to seeing in previous versions of Mastercam is, you know, we have our groover here, but it's a straight tool. And when I hit play on this verify, 
immediately it says, hey, it's going to crash. Now, you know, and I know, when this tool gets out on the machine, as long as it's a, a well, to, or as long as it's the correct facing tool loaded in the machine, it should have no problem. Face grooving tool. The problem was you would see these gouges and it would mar your part in Mastercam, making it seem like you're gonna have crack collisions at your machine. And you wouldn't have the ability to determine, oh, is it gonna clip the holder on this part of or this side of the diameter or this diameter, or is it going to be fine? Well, with 2020, we've added the ability to uh, define face groovers. And if I go in my verify, you'll see here we have a nice curved tool and if I hit play got a little little nip there play again and that's my bad I told it to wrap it back up from the uh, in a straight line there Yeah, that's just the insert ribbon. Just make sure something real quick. There we go. Tell it to do it in a feed rate. Now we don't get those collisions. That was my fault. So you can see there, we're not getting any collisions since the tool is properly defined, it's not gonna clip that diameter. And if it were to clip, that would be your first indication that you either need to change your program or that uh, that tool is probably not the proper tool for this job. So definitely very helpful. And for the last file I'm going to bring up here, whoop, I have it in my recent files here. So this here is a mill turn part. I wanted to bring in a 3D face grooving uh, for this part here, but unfortunately I could not find a model fast enough to uh, throw a 3D, uh, uh, 3D face grooving tool that would fit in that diameter range since it's such a small diameter. Um, given time, I'm sure I could find a file or a model for that. So this is a mill turn part. On my other screen, I have the code expert window, and there's now what they call component libraries in the code expert. So when you're running mill turn, you can come into the component libraries. Give it a second to launch up that separate window. It hops you into this new window here, which now we have the ability to create chuck, chuck the, the actual chuck itself. So if I right click on the chuck group, I can add a chuck. And is it a three jaw, it's a four jaw, six jaw. And I can configure it to what the channel width is and all this stuff that norm before we had to uh, edit the entire a machine to match that chuck, we can now create a chuck and save it to a library and then reference it later. So it can give it a minimum and a maximum spindle speed and clearances and all that good stuff. You can see I already have one in here called new chuck. And on top of that, we can now save chuck jaws into a group. So I can right click on chuck jaws group, add chuck jaws. Whoop, I didn't mean to rename that. Let's click. And this should look familiar to what we were using in the regular lathe. So if I said, this is actually two inches, this is actually 0.75, I might make the, di the height a little smaller just for, just for fun. Parameters, reference point, grab that front edge, green check. Should probably rename them, would make things easier on myself. Make sure these are the guy. Yep. Uh, test jaws. Yep. 
There we are. Green check. Yes, I want to save the changes. And now when we're programming in Mastercam, what I'm doing on my job setup, on the first page of the machine configuration, you can see here it went for the default eight inch chuck, but I could right click and select a new chuck. So I might, I only have that other eight inch chuck there. And then for the chuck jaws, I'll right click, select new jaws, and grab my, oh, did I not save the, probably didn't save the code expert. Give me one moment, guys. There they are. I just had to refresh the page. My bad, guys. So test jaws. And if I green check out of here, it's probably going to get mad at me because it doesn't like changing the jaws after the fact without regeneration. But you can see here, now I got my other jaws loaded in this machine. So you can start accumulating a library of jaws that you can keep referencing back to and different library of chucks that you can keep referencing back to. Post this out. See our jaws are in there. I didn't give it a radius, so it's kind of flat. But if I gave it a radius, it would show that it's actually clamping on the OD, not necessarily the, the very tip of that OD. Launch the simulation. There we are, our jaw and our chuck is in there. So it allows you to edit it in real time when before you'd have to get a hold of our, uh, our tech support and uh, have them change the, the machine for you or the uh, chuck jaws and chuck for you. So there we are. Well, Matt, that's all I had. That's just our kind of our final slide. But, you know, we always appreciate people taking their time out of their work day to attend these. Need some help? Feel free to contact us there. We'll talk to you soon.